still we're still reading from the color of money by Marissa Baradaran and what are we doing we're doing civil rights dreams economic nightmares let's do that chapter <coughs> there was a brief window between 1963 and 1965 when it seemed inevitable that the arc of the moral universe would actually bend toward justice quickly and without detour. At the centennial commemoration of the Emancipation Proclamation in September 1962, President Kennedy stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and acknowledged that blacks were not yet freed from bond of injustice. He promised to complete the work begun by Abraham Lincoln to eradicate the vestiges of discrimination and segregation. A year later at that same memorial, Dr. Martin Luther King led the March on Washington and asked the country to honor its founding principles of equality. When the King Coalition's di discipline, discipline nonviolence was met with the South's unruly backlash against federal law, cameras captured the clash and made the case for the petitioners. We will soon wear you down by our capacity to suffer, said Dr. King. We're still suffering. <laughs> the weird thing is, we actually have worn people down without suffering, but not in the way King thought. Black people today have suffered so much they've just given up and then like, just do whatever you want. We're not doing nothing. We don't care. We don't want to vote. We don't want to do nothing. A lot of us are just going to get drunk. We're going to get high. We're just going to whatever. And that's such a drag on everything that now the system has to respond to feed us again. Because there's too many of us to just kill all at once. So you have to do something with us. Because otherwise we're just roaming the street like zombies. For a brief moment, King's powerful message of peace and optimism united the, comp the complex and varied voices of the black community. The American public embraced the message that it was time to turn the pain from racism toward progress. For the first time since Reconstruction, there was harmony among all three branches of government. This time, the Supreme Court, the Executive Branch, and Congress all pushed toward racial equality. The court, the same institution that had sanctioned Jim Crow segregation in the South during the first Reconstruction, began to tear it down in case after case with masterful assistance from the NAACP's Thurgood Marshall. President Kennedy urged Congress to pass a sweeping civil rights bill in 1963 not merely for reasons of economic efficiency, world diplomacy, and domestic tranquility, but above all, because it is right. Kennedy also envisioned broader reforms aimed at addressing the conditions of poverty. This is little value in a Negro's obtaining the right to be admitted to hotels and restaurants if he has no cash in his pocket and no job. He remained committed to the bill until his life was cut short in November 1963. And we're in that same position today. People don't have any money. All the money's clogged up at the top with them and their monster children. And they just pass it down to their children and grandchildren. And they're just, they're monsters. I mean, all these people that you admire had wealthy parents. Bill Gates, um, what's what's the one that just bought X or, or Twitter? Um, Zuckerberg had well-to-do parents. Um, Elon Musk. All of them, they all have wealthy parents. And of course, you know Trump and his children. I mean, you can almost go across the board and all these people have wealthy parents. This whole idea that they started these businesses by themselves. No, yeah, with like a million dollars for their parents, $400,000 from their parents. 
and not loans, some of these people could get 50,000, 60,000 from the parents and fail three or four times before they succeeded. And the parents would be like, ah, yeah, you know. That's what you're dealing with. So if you think you can go into business, I've been in business for eight years, I have a corporation. It, it, it's, you just don't go into business and succeed no matter what you do. And we've done all of it. Vending, try to put in stores, we've done it all. And people ain't gonna buy it, and you just, you just screwed. You put in all that work. It took a master of the Senate to finally break the South stranglehold on Congress and pass the Civil Rights Act. President Lyndon Johnson knew how to breach the Southern legislative gamesmanship that had successfully blocked every attempt at civil rights legislation since the New Deal because he had practiced the hold-up game himself. First as junior Texas senator, then during his six years as the majority leader. He practically controlled the Southern Bloc and by extension the entire Senate. But now he pushed vigorously for reform. After all, he quipped, what the hell's presidency for? Upon his sudden inauguration, Johnson met with the leaders of the Civil Rights Coalition, King and the Southern Christian Leadership Council, SCLC, Roy Wilkins of the NAACP, Whitney Young of the National Urban League, James Farmer of the Cong Congress of Racial Equality, CORE, and A. Philip Randolph of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. I didn't know they was around that long. Young told reporters, I wonder if they're still around. I gotta look that up. Young told reporters after the meeting that a Magnolia accent doesn't always mean bigotry. When Andrew Johnson had taken office after President Lincoln's assassination in, 19, in 1865, he halted the reconstruction reforms and set the black community back for generations. With this second accidental president, Johnson, accidental President Johnson, things went very differently. Johnson, or Lyndon Johnson, made the civil rights cause his own. Together, LBJ and MLK were at the helm of the most monumental forward movement in race relations in American history. Their partnership was neither natural nor comfortable, but the timing was right, and the large part of the public Excuse me, I don't know what I'm yawning. Public was with them, at least for a little while. Johnson pushed Kennedy's original civil rights bill in Congress and made clear that he wanted nothing less than the full assimilation of more than 20 million Negroes into American life. Civil Rights Act was passed in July of 1964, banning racial discrimination in employment and in all public accommodations. Jim Crow was dead. Nobody enforced these laws. Nobody enforced these laws. In August of 1965, Congress passed the Voting Rights Act, which guaranteed blacks to vote. These acts were not empty gestures. Both laws were immediately enforced by the administration and the Supreme Court. So court doesn't have anybody to, to enforce it. So we know that's not true. Um, blacks achieved more rights in a few short years than they had in the previous 200. While the reforms of the 1965, I guess is why, I don't know what's wrong with me. I guess is why so many people love the 60s. While the reforms of 1965 were in fact the beginning of historic changes that continue today, they were also the high water mark of the civil rights movement. Soon there will be backlash, divisions, and retrenchment. Even President Johnson wavered. Johnson has been described as the last president to offer committed leadership that challenged racial justice. But even he stepped back from the civil rights struggle as the United States became mired in Vietnam. Civil rights historian Taylor Branch explains that it was Kennedy's assassination that fully launched the civil rights era and it would be Martin Luther King's assassination five years later that would bring it to a halt. And as you see, we haven't had anything 
cents. So 68 to 78 is 10 years, to 88, 20 years, to 98, 30 years, 2008, 40 years, 2018, 50 years. So 56 years, we haven't had any racial legislation. We haven't had any racial organization that challenges white supremacy. We've been going, what I say, 56 years. We've just been being brutalized mentally, emotionally, and physically by white terrorism with no resistance and we want our children to do what? Insanity. There's no way. We three or four generations, no resistance. No abolitionist movement. No civil rights movement. No Black Panther movement. No Black Power movement. No nothing. There's nothing. There's, all that was stripped away by 1970. So, that's the condition that we're in. And I hear a lot of people talking about making it right and they have to make it right because we're in such bad shape. It's just embarrassing now. Not only is it embarrassing, but we have become so pathological that the rest of the people can't function anymore without us getting ourselves together. So they have to get us together just so they can have their lives. But the struggle is, do you want black people to be stable? Because a black stable family and community, we're living in a different, we're not in America anymore. We're living in something different. That's why I think the Great Reset is a good name because that's exactly what it is. It's, we, you're going to be in something, we're in something completely different. If you're going to give justice to us, you can't be America anymore because America was built on us suffering so other people could make it. That's over. First of all, you don't need human bodies to do hard labor anymore like you did. There's so many machines that do so many things. So all these low-level jobs that you had us in, um, for the most part, and other poor people in the society, you don't have to have them anymore. But you got to give them some stability because people that are just wandering around are going to do um, pathological things. Right, So, I'm actually excited that we're in the Great Reset. It's not going quickly as it should. Because 2020, they started it, and we should really be further along. But we stuck, we stuck back with this president who doesn't know what century he's in. So, eventually, when we get some new leadership, new governors, new presidents, new, they actually are going to do the Great Reset. Um, because the oligarchs are going to demand that they do the Great Reset. That's the thing, too. They're going to demand it because they have a plan, they have things to do, and we're dragging far behind. And you can give black people stability now because we're so far behind, you're really just taking us out of a pit and putting us on solid ground. That's all you're doing. We'll never catch up to all the other groups that have had 50, 40, 30, 20 years of, um, of um, head start. You know, so uh, I'll be reading some more from this chapter. This book is very, very good. Uh, you need to pick it up and read it and go through it. Uh, you can support me by hitting the links. Go to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash, um, slash Connorson Center, etsy.com slash shop slash Connorson Center, and become, a, or you can become a sponsor, or you can just donate. I'm giving you good content, so donate. I'm bringing you good works, um, primary sources, and lessons. Take care, and be safe.